Hello and welcome everybody. King Demps here bringing you another bite-sized breakdown. This time we're going to take a look at OG Esports versus Virtus Pro. This is from the ESL Pro League group stages. This is their first game on Mirage. And as you can see, we're at a pretty important point in the map. We are at 9 all, and OG Esports are on an eco. If Virtus Pro win this round, they go into a 10-9 lead and they take a little bit of control over the map, particularly if you have a look at the money in their pockets. If they can win this round cleanly, they're going to have some solid economic control and it looks good for Virtus Pro in the rest of the map. Now, uh, first thing to note is we've got Mantu on a full buy for OG. He has the Hero M4 setup, so it's important to keep an eye on where he goes and what he does in the round. Now, first off, I just want to take a quick look at the setup. For OG, it's a very standard 2-1-2. Two, two. We've got Alexi B playing Window. We have Flames and Mantu playing towards A site, currently sat under, playing close together. And we've got Nico and Valde towards B. Just a really quick point about the A setup. I like this from Flames and Mantu. Uh, we're going to send Flames out from the under position to basically bait for Mantu. If first Pro came flying out onto A here, Flames would bait. Mantu would have a chance to multi-frag. Uh, I like the setup on A initially, but we'll take a look at the rest of the round as it plays out. Now, the first aspect of the round that I would like to mention is from Virtus Pro's point of view, and it is their setup. So they've gone for a 1-3-1. Uh, if we just quickly head back here, they've got Sanji holding towards B passive. They've got Kicker holding towards A passive. Virtus Pro clearly have in their heads this is probably a low economy round. They're playing quite a safe T sided setup. Virtus Pro are a quite slow and safe default heavy team anyway. Um, but I like this approach from Virtus Pro. It's minimizing their risk, trying to get a little bit of information and control towards middle before they do anything else on the rest of the map. Now, if we just let this mid hit unfold for a little bit, we get a nice little smoke into window. We get Buster throwing a smoke into connector and we get first pro taking some mid control. Now, as you can see here, they've got a nice deep smoking connector so they can have a little look inside, clear connector out, make sure no CTs are playing around uh, a smoke towards the bottom of the stairs. Um, the reason I like the deep smoke is because the smoke towards the bottom of the stairs, the CTs can play around and maybe look for some cheeky kills, maybe try and turn it into a one way. Um, this approach from Versus Pro is just very safe, very risk averse. And I like this take of mid control here. I think this is a good way for Versus Pro to be starting the round out. Now, whilst this mid control is taking place for Virtus Pro, I want to see what OG are doing on a ramp. Now, what they're doing is they're pushing for info, as you can see. Now, in a round such as this, where OG have such poor economy, the most important thing they need to try and do to try and win this round is they need to create an imbalance somewhere on the map. What I mean by that is if they just go for a standard 2-1-2 setup and just try and rotate in based off of standard information they hear, just play the round out normally like it was a gun round, they're most likely to lose. They have far less equipment than Virtus Pro do, and so obviously if they turn it into an even and standard round, they're most likely to lose. So instead, what OG are trying to do here is they're trying to gather some information so that they can make some sort of play to cause an imbalance. Maybe that's whether they push somewhere based on their information or whether they stack somewhere based on their information. So if we just play this out a little bit, as you can see, I like the approach again here from OG. So I liked Virtus Pro's initial approach in the round. You could say that Quick Hurts maybe rotated away from this a little bit quickly, but we'll, we'll see a little bit later that that maybe isn't quite the case. But I like this approach from OG, sending one of the unequipped players to get some info on a push. I like not sending Mantu because he has all the equipment. So instead of him dying because the T's holding a push, they save all of Mantu's equipment to try and go and stack somewhere later in the round. Now, as you can see, Kikut didn't actually abandon the A-hold completely. He went and supported mid with some grenades and then came back to A. And he's going to see and discourage this push from Flames. Flames just gets out dodge. He's never winning that fight. He says, okay, I got some info. I'm going to run away and I'm going to take that info. Now, something that I should have mentioned earlier in this video, but I didn't, and this is right towards the start of the round, is this little jiggle from Alexi B here. Now, let's just take you inside the window so we can see how that jiggle played out. As you can see, he definitely gets a sight on Buster and I think gets a sight on Jame there as well. What this does is this gives OG to some information to play with. They know that this is a heavy mid setup from Virtus Pro. 
that information is going to come into play later on in the round now here is the first proper gamble from og and this gamble is made by flames what he decides to do is he decides to re-aggress on a push that he has already been spotted making now whether you re-aggress when you've already been seen might be a smart or a dumb decision it really depends on the context there's no right or wrong answer for every scenario but i like make taking this risk because it is undoubtedly a risk on a round where you've got low economy flames has nothing to lose he's literally just got a usp if he dies it doesn't really matter it was a round they were supposed to lose anyway but if he does not die and he gets information then that's a huge boost to og's chances of winning the round Essentially, Flames has made a risk-reward calculation in his head, and I think he's got it 100% right. As we can see here, he just pushes on. Buster's going to see him again and throw a flashbang, but Flames just doesn't care, just keeps pushing and gathers that information. Now, what we're going to see from this point on is we're going to see Verse Pro start gathering up for a B hit. We see Yakinda, Jame, and Buster are going to be coming through mid, while Sanji and Kikuk come through B. Now, this is a fairly standard approach for Vertus Pro Mirage to have your kinder sort of lurking towards mid, particularly ladder room. He really enjoys lurking around this area. Um, and as we can see, Buster takes up a position in connector to hold for rotates and be a sort of lurk for Vertus Pro. Up until this point, I don't think Vertus Pro's approach in the round has had much wrong with it. Um, potentially, they could have, instead of grouping up five for the push onto B, maybe left kicker towards A to hold on to a potential backstab. Mid is okay. B apps is obviously okay. Underpass is obviously okay. The only area where something fishy can kind of happen and throw the round for Vertus Pro is on this A ramp area. I wonder if maybe they could have held on to that map control they didn't necessarily need all five for a hit on an eco but you can go either way on it you can say that it's riskier to leave somebody on their own and they might die to a push it's riskier to have four people rather than five people pushing onto a site it depends how you want to look at it it's not an obvious mistake though right we're going to come and take this viewpoint over b site now what we can see is that og have rotated absolutely everyone over to this b site a combination of alexi b's information in middle showing that there was a heavy mid presence in Virtus pro as well as flames pushing a ramp showing that there's no a presence means it's very likely to be a b hit there's a very slim chance that there's somebody lurking in palace but og's calculation on this one is correct and they make the right call we play the hit out now this is where things start getting a little bit fishy for Virtus pro as you can see there's only 37 seconds left in the round it's not no time whatsoever but things are starting to tick down a little bit for Virtus pro and they need to get a move on instead what they do is they use up all their utility which i've got no problem with but then they're very hesitant to push the site as we let this one play out sanji goes flying out on his own the spacing on this one is is really not acceptable the only place with the utility down as it is there's a molly here there's a molly here maybe someone's playing under the window but they can't threaten sanji where he is there's a smoke here which means nobody from the site is going to be threatening sanji the only angles that sanji can be dying to is this angle here this diagonal towards bench towards back pillar towards forest i don't know why kicker is looking here for a peek on sanji here it's it's never gonna come so here, I think that's Virtus Pro's first mistake. I think the spacing on this from Kicker is not great, and he doesn't have a chance to trade that from Nico. On the other hand, Sanji with full equipment probably shouldn't be dying to a P2 with no armor, but if Kicker spaces properly, I think he trades the kill there. As we can see, Virtus Pro continue their very slow crawl onto the site, and Flames' backstab is slowly coming to fruition. It's slowly happening. Yakinda gets a kill on sight here, but it's not a big issue because, again, Ver OG are uh, causing a lot of problems. They're making Virtus Pro take their time, and that's when Flames' backstab on kick Kicker comes to fruition. Now, Virtus Pro are in a real hole with 20 seconds left, and I want to take a quick look here at Buster. Let's go flying over to him. I'm not sure what Buster's getting done on this lurk here. There's 20 seconds left in the round, right? It's very unlikely that he's going to catch such a late rotate when Virtus Pro have shown so much presence towards B. Now, if Buster is here to call the rotate to A, it should be happening right now. Jame and Yakinda should be turning around and sprinting back towards A. But if we head back to this B site, Yakinda is already far too committed. Maybe Jame could make the rotate. But the big problem is, even if either of these two people can rotate, or your kinder could maybe turn into a lurk, look where the bomb is. Look at it, flying through the air. 
Virtus Pro essentially had entirely committed the bomb to B with the fact that it had gone through B apartments, and so Buster's Lurk is essentially useless. Let's just take a look at it from the overview point of view. Look how far away Buster is from any of the action. With 20 seconds left in the round, he's never catching a rotate, and I think it was very unlikely to catch a rotate anyway with the amount of presence they'd shown towards B. He's not going to be able to backstab because there's only 20 seconds left in the round. Even if he full sprints, which as you can see in a minute, he starts full sprinting. He's still too slow. There's still just not enough time on this hit. Jamie and Yakinda die in the crossfire. Buster gets a kill, but it's far too late and OG closed the round out. Let's just quickly show you that from this B site point of view. You can see Buster coming in for the late rotate. Jamie and Yakinda. Jamie and Yakinda not only get caught in the crossfire, but also get caught by Mantu's M4. Now, this is, again, another example of where OG's calculated risks were absolutely perfect. They chose not to risk the fully equipped Mantu on a push. And look, at the end of the day, he got the most vital and important job done. He got those two very important kills on the site, which kill this hit dead in its tracks. So, to summarize, really nice approach from OG, a combination of calculated risk taking and some smart information plays allow them to stack the B site, allow them to have flames on the backstab and give themselves every single chance to win the round. Virtus Pro, on the other hand, I like their initial approach to the anti-eco. However, I think they need to hold on to a ramp control a little bit longer. I don't see the need to kind of group up as five for the hit. And then they don't even group up as five because Buster just has a completely ineffectual lurking connector. With all of the presence they show towards B, the fact that it's an eco, so OG are very likely to stack. This is a gamble stack meta. This is what most teams tend to do on rounds like this or even on normal rounds where they go, for example, 4v5. The teams with four will often just stack the site. And ultimately, there's also just not enough time left on the clock when Buster decides to make his move. Buster essentially took himself out of the rounds. And I think if there is one key mistake which costs Virtus Pro this round it's probably Buster's Lurk I'm not blaming him necessarily individually as a player maybe there was a call for him to lurk there either way unfortunately I think he is the guy who the round falls apart around sorry Buster that's it from me guys if you enjoyed the video you know the drill and if you didn't enjoy the video then don't watch them genius I know take it easy guys